I want to start off by saying to you that I'm still growing and that the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct. And today I stand in, in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years, but could never understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace, which has made the difference. I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route, I would have never ended up where I am right now. But I will say that I have no shame at all at saying to you, throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing, unless it lines up with this. I've, I've done some corrective teaching in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, but not to the degree of what we're getting ready to do now. So why is this important? Because religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. And if it's one subject that the church has used for a long time to keep people in fear and guilt, it is in that subject of tithing. And it has to be corrected and it's gotta be corrected now I may lose some friends, preachers may not ever invite me no more, but I think I've already been through that, so it doesn't matter. Go. Hello family, this is Pastor Gideon. Welcome to Kingdom Matters, where we handle difficult questions people have regarding the faith, as well as add a biblical perspective to things making rounds um, that has an effect on our kingdom. Today we are talking about Dr. Criflo Dollar's issue with tithes. Dr. Kriflodola has retracted his teachings on Titan because he says he has now encountered the gospel of grace and that it was just the use of guilt and fear. And the internet is going haywire. People are saying all sorts of things and people are claiming, so what should we do? Should Christians tithe? Today, a man of God may change his mind and say, one thing or the other what does the bible actually say about titan so we are going to have a summary on the subject of tithes i want to know what you think in the comment section i would like you to listen to the end because if you miss a portion you may not understand the whole truth that we are going to set forth today so let's go the first thing you need to know is that the matter of tithe is not salvific neither is it an essential doctrine of the faith whether one tight or not, it doesn't affect their salvation. Get it? The reason it is becoming a big deal is that some denominations are giving it the weight it doesn't deserve by claiming that people who believe in Jesus but do not tight won't make heaven. That's where the problem starts from. Yes, many people are tightened today because they fear they will go to hell. The preacher told them and the denomination they belong in says that if you don't tight, you are hell bound now in some churches they have had and preached visions of people that are burning in hell because they defaulted in tithes and that is a big problem they've set aside the word of god and now believe in their own visions and make their visions the standard and that is one of the main problem of today's charismatic and prophetic churches some prophetic and charismatic churches may not say you will go to hell but they claim if your life is tight watch your tight if you are suffering watch your offering what they simply mean is that the reason for the hardship you face is because you don't tight and like what is said in malachi the devourer has visited you and so that is why things are not going well for you this is a great misunderstanding of the operation of the new testament anybody that says your life is tight because you don't tight simply do not understand how the new testament works that is not the way the new testament works you don't suffer because you don't offer in the new testament according to romans 8:32, the bible says that he who spared not his own son but gave him up to be killed or delivered for us how can how shall he not with him freely give us all things 
This is the biggest thing in our faith that God has reached out to us to save us. All he wants from us is that we will believe and receive his gift, which is Jesus Christ. That's all. And he is ready to give us all things freely. So how do you turn again to put a bigger burden on the people of God that if they don't do these things, they can't be saved. They will go to hell. No, this is wrong. When the first church council gave a decree to the Gentile churches on how they are supposed to behave, it never had any resemblance of tithe in there. Have you checked it? Because listen, tithe doesn't hold that weight as people want to allude to it. It doesn't carry the weight people want to put to it. When they gave the decree to the Gentile churches in Acts 15, 28 to 29, the Bible says they said, For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. Look at the necessary things that you abstain from meat offered to idols, from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if you keep yourself, you shall do well, fare you well. That's all the instruction they gave to the Gentile churches. And they said they were not going to put bigger or any difficult burden on them because they themselves according to the law could not obey them so why do ministries and ministers make a big deal out of tight than it deserves even to the point that for some denominations it is a way of becoming a member that if you are not a tighter you are not a member and if you have an issue the first thing they go check is your tight card if they don't see that you tight faithfully then they are not going to reach out to do anything for you and for some places it is very very bizarre and very very helpful because people that have been in the church for years will be neglected in their time of need just because they didn't tight or they defaulted in tights because to that denomination that is the only proof that you remember though you are present every day they don't care that is very very bad now the reason people are putting too much weight on tight than they deserve is because of two things one is positive and the other is negative now it is all about money let me start with the negative the love for money and i mean it the love for money is the reason many ministries cannot fathom or agree to any message that tries to explain that tight is not compulsory in the church today and i use the word compulsory purposefully tight today is not compulsory no matter how you look at it tight cannot be by force because number one tight under the law has not been given to the christian just as the christian is not under the law to be killing animals for example sacrifice for sins and to obey any of the over 613 laws it has not been given to the christian secondly tight before the law as practiced by abraham and jacob was not commanded it was born out of a relationship and faith which they had with god and then that means that it is subjective to the giver and not something that can be enforced since in the new testament there's no word enforcing tight either in the new testament you can't find a place which says if you don't tight your life will be tight if you don't tight you are not a christian if you don't tight you go to hell it is not there but does it mean there can be tight of a sort in the local church system that is where the positive rule of money comes in sincerely sincerely there are many things ministries and churches do and have to do that require that they have a lot of money from running the ministry activities of winning souls planting churches training pastors taking care of pastors taking care of the poor of the church all this requires a lot of money and it can only be met by radical givings by the members having seen the enormous need faced by many ministries like the ones i have mentioned to be honest with you, just a casual offering of what you have without any serious commitment to giving will just be like a drop in an ocean. It won't go anywhere. That's why just at the beginning of the early church, people were taught to give radically to the church to the point where people sold property just to support activities of the church. And those guest church, according to scripture, brought great consolation to the church. And it was beautiful and it helped the church thrive. In Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37, the Bible says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but that they all had things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lagged. 
for as many as were possessors of lands of houses sold them so they sold lands and houses and brought the prices of the things that they were sold and laid them at the apostles feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need and joseph who by the apostles was sending barnabas it is believed that they named him barnabas because of this thing that he did the son of consolation which is being interpreted or the meaning of the name a levite and the country of cyprus having land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles feet do you see their mindset they maintain here they were not taught to give a tent to the lord rather they were made to see that all that they had belonged to the lord everything was for the lord everything was for the lord and his purpose and they gladly sold properties to help cater for other saints and the purpose of the church this is far far bigger than tight which is just a tent so if this is anything to go by 10 percent in the new testament is not radical enough compared to what many in the early church did do you see it but is that to say we should give everything we have out to the church even sell our houses and lands no it is a statement it is a statement to show that if we are in the right place where the lord wants us to be in our work with him no amount of giving no amount of resources no amount of money will be too difficult too big for us to give for his cause it won't be a problem to do anything for the lord do you get it now putting this at the back of our minds how are we supposed to give for the cause of God and the local church we find ourselves in? Three things as given to us in the New Testament. Yes, there are three things to consider. First, you must be led by the Lord. It must come from your heart and not under compulsion. And the third one, it must also be informed and affected by the need at hand as you can see or how it is related to us by leadership. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, the Bible says, Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So first and foremost, in the New Testament, we ought to be led by God in everything we do, including our giving. You need to listen to the Lord, then you need to purpose your giving in your heart. Don't let anyone force you to do what you don't believe in. Don't let anybody to force to give what you don't want to give. Don't give in fear of going to hell or under compulsion because you are expected to do something. Because they want you to do something doesn't mean you should do something. Yes, that is not giving in the New Testament at all. Giving grudgingly and you go home, you are complaining doesn't please the Lord. And the third thing to consider in New Testament giving is that just as there's no law to tighten the New Testament, there's also no law against giving monthly a portion of all your income to the Lord as said by your local church for the purpose of handling the needs of the ministry. Yes, you may choose to obey the leadership to support the work of the ministry from your heart as they lead you or they declare or they put before you. Or you may choose not to obey them. But listen, obeying leadership is always better. If you believe in your local church, then you should also believe that the leadership is set up by the Lord and their goal is to lead you to fulfill purpose. In the New Testament, giving must be from the Spirit, must be from your heart, not under compulsion. And also it can be ordered and placed before us by leadership. And so if they administratively put in place a measure to sustain and run the work and they put it before us, it will be good to be a part of it from your heart. If the Holy Spirit is not asking you to hold back, you have to want to be part of any form of giving that is going on in the local church because it is for purpose and you belong and are part of that purpose. In 1 Corinthians 16, 1-2, the Bible says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week. Let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no guidance when I come. Do you see the role of leadership in here? There is some sort of order from Apostle Paul to the churches in Galatia and also now to the church in Corinthian. And even tells them when they should do it and how they should do it. Meaning leadership has room to lead us to make certain contributions as and when they need be. Now, 
The name they give it doesn't matter. They may call it tithe. We know technically it is not the Old Testament kind of tithe. As you are led to do it, know that you are not fulfilling or doing the Old Testament kind of tithe in which if you fail, you are going to have divorce coming and the case of the law being applied to you. They may even call it partnership, but it can be a monthly or a weekly giving. They may call it same support or ministry support. Give it any name you want and it may be done monthly or weekly. Just understand that it is not the Old Testament tithe with its various requirements. It is an administrative tool by the church to sustain and run its purpose for which we are a part of. And the Lord approves of that. The Lord allows for the church, the local church leadership to be able to put out something like that for the purpose and for the course of his work. Do you get it? So the name doesn't really matter. It can be said to be a monthly thing, a weekly thing, but make sure that you are led by the Lord. It is not under compulsion and understand that you are part of a vision which you must support, which you must play a role in. And so if your church says there's no tithes, just free will giving, that is all right. If your church says you, if you're a member of the church, we want you to um, be a tighter or a monthly or a weekly um, supporter of the vision and purpose by taking portions of your income and giving to the ministry. Make sure if it, it settles in your heart, it comes from your heart, you become a part of it. There is no word against it. And so there's actually technically no um, word against churches that tight. Neither is there a word against churches that do not tight. Technically, we understand that it is not the Old Testament kind of tithe, but it's just an administrative tool to help the work of God go. And you are not going to miss heaven. You are not going to go to hell. Your life is not going to be tight because you refuse to be part of something like this. Do you get it? So this is a summary of tithe in the New Testament, and I hope it blessed you. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Shalom.